Oh, hello. Evening, folks. Thanks for joining me here in the hoop house. It's uh, a little cold outside, but just wanted to give you a little view of what we had uh, done last year in the hoop house and what we're planning to do this year in the hoop house regarding NFT, Dutch buckets, and just kind of walk through a couple of those items and uh, you know answer some questions I know I've gotten offline. So I've got some of our buckets here. Uh, we had just two rows of buckets. So you can see that those, you know, all go back down into our reservoir. And then we use the same reservoir for the NFT system as well. Um, but, you know, we've got our buckets here. We space them, you know, about a foot apart, 16 inches apart. And each of them kind of offset. We've still got some over here that we had tea plants in. They didn't do quite as well, too much nutrient. And uh, they're still there, but we haven't cleaned that up completely. But I just wanted to show, you know, the buckets and you know inside of the buckets these are from bootstrap farmer and inside of the buckets there is a little bit of a, a, a cavity at the bottom so they do hold nearly about two inches of water down there nutrient water and you'll see that we've got these little pvc uh, components that sit down in there to keep roots from really going out into the drain uh, and this also helps keep the water whenever it is uh, flowing back in from the reservoir from building up and just going straight out it allows to refresh that water that is in the bottom of the bucket and you know, inside of the buckets they do have uh, you know some growing media that does wick up the nutrient so I've actually got one of the bags uh, from one of our buckets I haven't completely gotten rid of everything we were cleaning out from this last year so we put paint strainers the paint strainers help keep any of the larger material from going back into the reservoir, which could then clog the pumps. It could get in and clog one of the tubes that feed into the buckets to get the water in. But I wanted to showcase and show, look how much root growth is actually inside of the buckets themselves. I mean, this is pretty solid here, but the rest of the material, this is uh, perlite and vermiculite. I do a layer approach where I have the bottom layer perlite as one third. I do a middle layer of vermiculite because that doesn't quite hold as much water. So it allows there to be a little bit more oxygen in that layer. And then at the top, I do perlite. Uh, and then this, what we did before this last year, we just put a rock wool cube that we had started the, the seedling in. We place that down into the growing media, cover it back up with perlite. And then we take our watering feeders, which I'll show here in a second. We take those and stick it down into that perlite material. We actually just kind of had it floating there almost right above the rock wool, uh, which is something we're going to change. And I'll note on that when we talk about changes for this upcoming year. Okay, so I want to show real quick the, uh, the existing buckets that we had in here and just kind of show, I guess, the, uh, more, I guess you could call it the anatomy of what we had set up. So uh, we actually, in, in this bucket here, we had collard greens and, you know, we did have problems with pests. So we, after the, like the first harvest, I think, uh, we ended up having to really get rid of them. But to show the buckets, you know, we, we had larger holes cut here with a very poorly done job, but uh, essentially we had our feeder tubes on the top. Those were just with some, you know, little stakes. And I would put that down in here to kind of point towards the center of the rock wool cube. And we had two of those off of a main valve here from our main supply line. And this did have a, a little bit of a, a nozzle so I could turn it off or on if I needed to work on this bucket or if there was anything planted in it. Just like this one, never ended up getting anything planted. So it was off. Uh, just used a binder clip to top it onto the top of the actual bucket itself but let me take that off and i'll show you here underneath this we've just got our perlite so still remnants of the cube haven't completely cleaned this out but you'll see we've got our perlite uh, that is in here if we go down further we'll get to a vermiculite section and that'll be this darker matter so it's actually still moist down in there and there literally has not been any water running through this for months um, that that material grow medium is is great for holding and wicking up that moisture because at the bottom of this bucket 
there is still water. Even though we haven't actually run this system in this bucket particularly for several months, there's still standing water at the bottom because of the, the, the design of the buckets. So that really works for our favor if there was ever a power outage and our pumps weren't working or if there was a failure in the pump, we still at least have you know that two inches of water at the bottom of the buckets to help wick the material back up to the plant if for some reason we weren't able to you know actually get new nutrient and run that back up to the actual top of the plant of the bucket uh, but that's overall just a quick rundown of how i set up the buckets last year for the buckets i do have a two inch pvc line this is the drain um, i've just got some poly tube here and off of that i've got my irrigation feeders um, so essentially you know i had all of this connected into one single reservoir. It's a 55 gallon tote that I got from, I think it was Lowe's, but I had that set up here. I had our NFT, which a much larger line uh, for drainage coming in because it was constant and a lot more plants and, and water running through it, but all through the same reservoir, which is something I'm gonna change next year. Uh, and then, you know, from the two inch line, those both got connected. I had the feeders here again, connected for the buckets. And then those are just this uh, this one poly tube that runs along. I had little irrigation plugs that came out with just two open ends. Uh, one thing I am going to change next year is that I, I saw someone who had uh, trying to get rid of algae because if you if you do notice like at the top of these because they're open, there will be a buildup of algae, which not the end of the world. That's fine, but to try and uh, compensate and get rid of that, what I'm gonna do is bury those leaders a little bit inside of a small, say, uh, probably like a half inch PVC line. So I'll probably take a little half inch PVC tube, put it down into that perlite mix, about six inches maybe, and then put that feeder tube down in. That way it almost acts as bottom feeding because the perlite is gonna wick up a lot of that moisture and keep those roots nice and watered but that'll also then keep the top 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 layer from getting that surface water and build up so we won't have as much algae build up and it won't look as you know nasty and then you also have a, a tendency to get other bugs or something like that growing on top of the the perlite because i'm gonna i'm not gonna use these tops uh going into this next year because i'll be able to use that and, and keep from the algae build up another thing at the end of these lines you'll see you know i had one here I had another one here. Um, you'll see I'm building, I'll show you that in a moment, what I'm doing for next year. But what I'm gonna, you know, what we had here was if I do need a clean out, and I, again, I did the holes into the pipe every about 12 to 16 inches, I can't remember exactly. But we did have, uh, you know, a clean out here at the end so that if I did need to, I can come in there and clean it out. But I really had no issues with that. Um, didn't need to do that at all whatsoever this past year. And then for the reservoir last year, so again, this 55 gallon tote got from the hardware store and I had two pumps, one for the buckets. I had one for the NFT. They were both the Viva Sun, uh, eight gallon per, 800 gallon per hour pump, I believe it was. Uh, had the Dutch buckets one on a timer. So for those, because that, that growing medium does a really good job of wicking up all of the water, uh, you know, I only had it on let's see i think it was one hour on and three hours off in basically four different cycles throughout the day so 7 a.m it would turn on for an hour 11 a.m it would turn on for an hour 3 p.m and then 7 p.m and that's basically what we did in the heat of summer uh on the other sides of that i had it basically on three hour or three sections uh, three sections throughout the day so again, still an hour, but I just offset those so it wasn't as frequent because it wasn't quite as hot and they weren't as thirsty. And you can kind of see here how I had it set up. Uh, I had the drains coming back into the reservoir. You can see it's, it's upside down and turned over, but I had them cut and I did have drains here. So there were two in the back. Those were the drains. I had another piece of PVC in there so that the water would drain directly in. And then I had this other hole here so that I could get all my feeder tubes and pump everything out through there i did had i had air stones in here as well so that basically i could you know oxygenate the water again that is going to be something different i'm changing for next year uh instead of having the 
air stones that you know they only last for i would say you know six months or so depending on if you were able to clean them if you get really good ones but those do tend to clog after a while and they get just nasty and some algae build up and whatnot on them so i'm going to try something different to do with uh trying to keep the the reservoir and that nutrient water oxygenated next year all right and then for the nft which you can see i have all of my uh all of my rows set up here still i haven't queen cleaned them all i got all of the roots out and everything um these are actually from crop king they are five feet in length i believe uh when you order them normally they'll be say like 10 foot length you can get them custom sizes uh for these ones specifically the lids come in five foot lengths so i just went with regular five feet here and kept the lids all in one single piece but essentially these ones are all turned around uh they have you know a 45 degree pipe here on the end that fitting goes directly into my four inch pvc back there so they fit nice and tight they drain everything here is on a slope so my table essentially everything is sloping backwards and then i use just these irrigation feeders they go into the front uh, for these ones that are turned around on here you can see i've got the tiny little holes here and this feeder goes right into that little hole I've got two here so that if I did mean to add a second tube or one was clogged, I could have the, the you know, another tube come in. That's one thing to, to make sure is that these tubes, you know, they're, they're, uh, they can get clogged at times. So that's something you want to come out and you'll want to watch every single day and multiple times. You're probably like at least twice a day. I was coming in and checking on these because if those get clogged, there's no water running. The plants in here will die off and, and kind of just wilt very quickly because they have no water uh, and they depend on that. Unlike the buckets where they can survive because they're in a grow media that is getting water very frequently because they're holding that moisture. So that'll be one thing, you know, to watch and make sure that these feeders, they are not getting clogged. That's where having different filters and things inside of the reservoir on the pumps help to make sure that there's nothing bigger getting into the, the, the irrigation line. So again, another just poly tube coming back. It's on the same feed, but it's actually, well actually, sorry, this one is actually on its own pump because it's constant. Whereas the buckets, those were only on during those hour periods throughout the day on the timer. So again, though, coming from the same reservoir on the same nutrient mix up, which was at, at the very beginning, I was using a different uh, lettuce mixture. But then halfway throughout the year, I switched over to the master blend. It was still a three-part system. So I had the actual fertilizer number uh, that was going in. And then I would mix that into a five gallon bucket. Uh, I actually have a, a 65 gallon drum that I was mixing everything in and would pump it back into the reservoir because it was under there, it was kind of tight to get in. So I'd mix up that three-part blend. It was just, you know, the fertilizer. And then I would put in my uh, my other two parts, which were Epsom salt and I think uh, calcium nitrate. So mix all those up. I would normally do 35 to 40 gallons at a time when I was doing my mixtures. So a little bit about how last year went. Um, if, if, if anybody's seen pictures, last year where I'm standing was all just a big soil bed. Um, similar to the one that's on this side, but double the size. It was up on blocks it was all soil we wanted to at least try and have soil in here because that's what we've done before all of the hydroponics was brand new to us last year so we didn't want to just completely jump in without at least getting a trial season in uh actually the the hydroponics worked out a lot better than any of the soil did you know we we had herbs and all that going in and that was that was fantastic but the tomatoes and all of the 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 beans and everything that we had in here did not do very well. I believe that was just because the, the soil bed was not deep enough for their root systems. So for the buckets, those actually did a fantastic job. Uh, the problem was they were too close together. So I found that, you know, even this, you know, nearly one foot to 16 inches apart, uh, it depends on the, the type of plant you're putting in here, the crop. So on this whole front row here, we figured, well, we'll have things that trellis up, things that are bigger, right? We have more room here. So we did a good row of uh, two or three different varieties of uh, tomatoes. And then we had two different varieties of cucumbers. So problem was that shielded the back row here from getting a lot of sun. 
on the outside of the hoop house, we get, this is, you know, that's, that's north. So from the east, we're gonna get our early morning sun. The problem is we have a large garage here. So it doesn't get the early morning sun early enough. So this got a lot less grow time back in here. We didn't have a lot of sunlight. So our peppers did well. The tea, I think it needed more light, but a nutrient mix differently. Um, but it just didn't get enough sunlight throughout the day. So the problem I also found was things were just too tight. It was too close. We do have fans, but there was not enough airflow. So we were susceptible to different kind of uh, fungus and we had insects growing. And, and on the, the pepper plants especially, we had a lot of, of bugs on them. While we did get a lot of good harvests, there were just uh, issues with constantly having to come out here and control those pests. So that's one, one problem we really had with things. They were just too close together because those plants just got too large. So because the hydroponics have so, uh, the yield on those is, is great. And we have the, the plants getting much bigger very quickly. Uh, we don't need to put them so close together. We, we're just gonna try to space things out a little bit more next year. But that's our, our experience from this past year. That's what we saw just from our, our, our growing period last time. On to the, the next year. So I've already started building and putting together my new area where the buckets will go. Um, I am gonna redo this section over here. I uh, just haven't gotten to it yet. But what we did find is that we want to have the buckets lower to the ground so that we can have more room for them to grow up. And we don't need to have it go all the way to the ceiling. Uh, you know, I have these lines for the trellises, but, you know, we had the tomatoes all the way at the top because they were indeterminate. So they're just growing and growing and it was crazy. Very difficult to come out here and make sure that we're keeping on top of uh, pruning those, topping them. So this year we're going to lower it farther. My reservoir that I got to redo that whole system, the reservoir for the buckets, I'm going to actually bury down. I'm going to get a 275 gallon uh, square crate, put that down in the ground. Everything will flow back into that. So the buckets will all be on their own system. That 275 gallon crate will supply these buckets, these buckets, and these buckets, but we're going to have the NFT on its own system. Uh, just so that we can try to tweak those nutrients and keep them for the lettuce and you know really have all the peppers because this is going to become the pepper house we're going to have peppers and you know make sure that we can get all the the right nutrients for flowering and fruiting and those different periods uh, and, and we will change this so that those go down they're going to be on lower to the ground platforms but essentially the same thing uh, i'm just going to space them out a little bit more so I wanted to at least have at least two feet on the back side so we could get there if we needed to. And then again, have three feet between each of these rows because these are about 19 inches uh, up, you know, for that actual tabletop. So this row will come over here a little bit, get centered up. We'll have a nice three foot walkway down the middle. This other row here that I've already started. This entire soil bed, that is gonna come out as well. We still have uh, one tiny little lavender plant. We've got some thyme still growing and we've got carrots down at the very end that are still doing very, very well. Uh, I mean, they're they're massive, probably, you know, a good eight inches in size, about an inch in, uh, inch in diameter. So those are growing really well. We've kept those all winter long, but we're going to go ahead and we'll, we'll get this soil bed out of here. We're going to replace that and do another row of buckets. Uh, and then down here at the end, we're just going to reconfigure a little bit. I've got our wash sink. And we do have a, a table and you can see that table it is underneath here. So this table was just sitting at the very end of the aisles. But what we're gonna do this year is we're gonna put it back there. So we'll shorten that bed up a little bit and we'll put that table up against the wall. That'll create more space here because I'm gonna put the reservoir in. It's gonna be a much bigger reservoir. Since we're gonna have a lot more buckets, I've got uh, probably another 10 buckets or so. I'm gonna put in this hoop house. I've already got, I think 20 but I'm gonna take the other 30 that I ordered, because I ordered 40 over the winter. Those are gonna go into our new hoop house. That's where we're gonna do tomatoes, cucumbers, and other crops over there. This will strictly be lettuce and then peppers. We're gonna experiment with a lot of different pe peppers in here. One other change that we're gonna do, uh, on our roll-up sides on the side of here, I had ordered insect netting, never got it on last year, just didn't have a chance once we were actually going and things were, were growing. Um, but what we're gonna do is before we actually start get growing this year, 
after I'm done with the new hoop house, we're gonna come back in here and go ahead and put that insect netting on the bottom. I've got to fill in the, the, the gap there because we built this all level, even though there is a good grade where over the, the entire 40 feet, we probably drop, oh, I would say 18 inches at least, if not a little bit more. So there's a good gap at the very bottom down there and I've got to fill that in either with just some more lumber uh, or some metal sheeting just to fill that gap. And then we'll have insect netting on all of our roll-up sides so that we can try to keep from flies and other pests coming in here and getting on all of our plants. Uh, also gonna put on our vents, make sure that there's some screen or some kind of netting on that as well. And then on our exhaust fan, Make sure we've got some netting on that. We'll have to clean that you know, over time as well, but the more that we can secure this, then the better we'll be and not have as many pests coming in. Um, we did put for the winter and try to extend the season. I put a bunch of spray foam to fill in you know, a lot of these gaps. And that did a really good job of keeping air from just flowing right in. But you know, we really gotta finish and get all of the roll-up sides sealed up as best as we can. And that way we'll have a much tighter gap and we won't really have a lot of those insects just coming and going and eating up all of our plants. Uh, and so I also did, we were trying to figure out what was the easiest way to, to clean these buckets. Um, so a couple weeks ago, I'd gone and gotten this uh, watering trough from Tractor Supply and thought about just filling it. We actually had it filled with uh, sanitizer water, had a lot of these buckets in there just soaking with the lids, all of the pieces. Uh, then the temperatures dropped <laughs> and we were probably in, uh, we were under, we were below freezing for nearly a week straight. That water was icing up on the top. It was extremely difficult to even try and clean anything in. So those sat around for a while. Uh, we were just able to get those out this last weekend and dump that water. But once it starts warming up a little bit more, then we'll worry about getting everything uh, nice and sanitized and ready for the, the spring. Um, so not quite there yet don't have to worry about that quite yet just trying to at least get some of the base infrastructure set up and move a lot of this concrete block around and readjust things and i got to get all this soil out of here still and get that set up outside uh, because it's going to go back into our outside lots where we've got carrots radishes uh, bok choy broccoli started we got red cabbage going and that'll just go back into all of that mix out there so you can see here we've got a good amount of carrots growing you know we've just kind of let these go into the in, in the soil here we've just let them go for a while um you know they're they're fine holding there it's again it's it's cool out in the evenings during the day and i've just been giving them water letting them go and they're uh they're growing really well keep those going throughout the rest of the winter and one other thing too so yeah with our with our hoop house we are a double layer poly on this so we've got an insulating layer in the middle of the two sheets uh we have two fans on here Probably really only need one, but uh, I have to redo those layers. We have them uh, in between two different pieces of wiggle wire channel. So there is a slight leak of that air more than we would like. I redid the, the sides here uh, before the winter and along the, the top arch on the ends, that hasn't been redone yet. So there is a slight leak. That's why I've got two of them on here. Uh, and you know what this does is it just helps add a little bit of insulating layer so that one whenever it is you know a little bit colder we can retain some of that heat it just keeps some of that heat inside the other nice thing is that when it does snow which it has done a couple times this winter already what it does is it allows some of that snow to just just cascade and fall off so we don't have to come out here in the middle of the night and start shoveling and, and scraping snow off the top unless we're getting a really heavy snow which we did this last time uh, probably about four inches and then I came out and was just scraping it off. I got to be on that. I still have to post, but yeah, that is a really nice, uh, really nice add on is that one, we get the insulating layer, but it also helps, uh, keep and protect the plastic from wind. So we get a lot of high winds in the spring and they come off of the mountain ridge. So we get a little, uh, pre uh prevailing winds here that just come and they'll, they'll beat on that plastic. So having the insulating layer, it helps so that it only is really moving it around from the outside and it is not thrashing it up against these poles. So that makes it a little bit less likely to, uh, you know, slash it or cause a rip or anything, unless there's any kind of debris that hits the plastic. One other thing too, touch on the plumbing. Um, so we had an irrigation company come out. 
they installed a couple of these hydrants around the garage here last year from our well. So this one, we made sure that they pulled it inside of the hoop house so that at least that any of the, the plumbing, anything we had here, it was less likely to directly freeze around it. But I have uh, PVC set up, you know, three quarter inch PVC going uh, out into the irrigation. We had that going over to that sink. Um, I've also got uh, an electric water, water heater here, supply on demand water heater. So I had that set up so at least I could get hot water for mixing nutrients, sanitizing buckets, that sort of deal. Got our own power panel out here too. Um, I had a, a new electrical hookup set up from the, the power company into the garage last year. So I, I did that panel and had them come hook that up to get our own 200 amp circuit on the garage itself. Uh, I pulled off, uh, an, I think it was about 80 amps over two on a sub panel into the greenhouse or the, um, the hoop house rather and was able to supply this water heater, our fans, the lights in here we've got, all the, all the pumps. So we've got plenty of power inside of this hoop house. I'll do the same thing over in the new hoop house. Won't need the, uh, all of that power because we, we're not gonna put in the hot water over there as well. But at least that way we'll have enough power if we needed it, we, we have enough room over there. And then you can see down here with, uh, with our exhaust fan, which is way overpowered for this 20 by 40 space. <laughs> um, although it does get a lot of good, uh, you know, good airflow. Uh, it builds up a lot of negative pressure when all the sides are down and closed. Um, but we wanted to make sure that we got at least enough airflow to, to cycle through and, and get enough fresh air through those front vents. So this is just a, a thermostat regulator. I can set whatever temperature I want it to be at, and then it'll turn the fan on when it exceeds that. Um, and it's just in line with our power circuit here and then goes up to this this one outlet where the fans at so that's it I just wanted to show a little bit about what we did last year in the hoop house um, How those Dutch buckets worked out and then just touch on a couple of the changes uh, There's plenty that we're still working on and you know, this is very much a, a learning effort We're we're trial and error here to see you know what works better and especially in this climate love growing inside of the hoop house that's been a, a huge benefit to try and at least control the climate control the water making sure that we can keep the plants nice and clean so they're not just getting dumped on with uh you know rain and they're just you know it's a much much better growing environment so that's what i wanted to touch on now it's time for me to go inside and see what jill's got cooking for dinner cheers